One goal of my laboratory is to understand the neurobiological basis of complex behaviors. In humans, disease-causing mutations can result in complex behavioral changes. For example, mutations in the gene P10, uh, found here on chromosome 10, can cause some forms of autism with macrocephaly. Many mutations in the P10 gene have been found in autism patients. Some of these mutations are indicated by these triangles on this schematic of the, of the P10 gene. This particular child has this D252 gene uh, uh, mutation shown here. And he has autism and an enlarged head or macrocephaly. Autism is often characterized by deficits in social interaction, delays in language acquisition, and inappropriate responses to sensory stimulation. However, the changes in the brain that underlie these complex behavioral abnormalities are not well understood. To try to bridge this gap between our understanding of the neuronal function and our emergent abilities, we are introducing mutations that have been identified in human autism patients into the mouse brain. To do this, we inject viruses into the mouse brain to mimic the genetic defects found in human autism patients. In other words, we're using viruses as a tool to make genetic changes in the neurons of the mice. Shown here, we're injecting a, a virus into the, into the brain of a living mouse, and this virus results in the expression of a fluorescent protein called M-cherry in, in sections of, the, of this mouse brain. In order to model the autism-causing mutations, what we do is co-inject a virus that will decrease the expression of normal healthy P10 with a virus that will replace the normal P10 with a mutated form of P10 that has been identified in a human patient. So in the blue panel of this image, what you're seeing is staining of the, of the P10 protein. And what I want to point out is that there are these dark regions in this staining as you can see here. In the red panel, you're looking at the expression of M-cherry from a virus that turns off the expression of the P10 gene. So what you'll see is that these red neurons sort of fill in where the dark patches in the, in the, the, the blue staining is. And this indicates that this infection with this red virus is decreasing the expression of the endogenous P10. In the green panel, what you're looking at is a GFP fused to P10 that has been mutated in a similar fashion that is found in human autism patients. And you can see that if you look in the merged panel here, that the cells that are green are also these cells that have abundant expression of P10. And that's because this, this virus is overexpressing the GFP P10 point mutation. Another thing that's important to point out is that in cells that are both red and green, like this cell here, there's still a lot of the, the mutant P10 expressed, and that's because the mutant P10 is impervious to the ability of the red virus to knock the P10 down. So having now established a method to mimic the genetic change that can underlie the complex behavioral abnormality in the humans, we can use sophisticated imaging and electrophysiological techniques to study how neuronal function is altered in these mice. It's our hope that this will not only give us insight into autism, but it will also, that we will also be able to relate our findings to the neurophysiological basis of complex cognitive and emotional tasks in general.